So we're continuing on looking at multi-gang switches. So we've been looking at two gang switches, so two switches on the front. And when we turn them over, traditionally they are two-way switches. So this being a three-gang switch, and this being a four-gang switch. As we're building up our knowledge on multi-gang switches using the three-plate method. The drawings I've been using here can be downloaded from the link in the description, and you can follow along making your own wiring diagrams through this series. In my last video, we looked at this scenario here, this scenario where we had a light fitting on the ground floor and a light fitting on the first floor. And this is common what we have in domestic dwellings. You come in through the front door, you've got a two gang switch. So I'm bringing my two gang switch. It could be that it's a three gang switch. One of these could be for, say for an outside light, but we'll stick with a two gang switch. And one switch will turn on the ground floor light one switch will turn on the first floor light. So when you walk upstairs, you've got that light on. And when you get to the top of the stairs on the first floor, there'll be another switch, which in this case is a one gang two way switch, which means you can turn off the light before you say get into the bed. So that's the situation we had. And at the very end of that wiring diagram video, I said that if this switch here, the two gang switch, you would end up having to turn off or remove two overcurrent protection devices in order to replace that switch. Because you would have the circuit on the ground floor fed from one, say, circuit breaker, and then a separate circuit breaker going upstairs feeding the first floor light fitting on the landing. And therefore, when the cable systems come through, you'd have one for one breaker and one for the other breaker, and you'd have to turn off two breakers in order to replace the switch, making sure you do your safe isolation procedure correctly. And I said at the end of that video, with not adding any more cables, so in other words, I've run one cable from the consumer to the ground floor light, we've got a cable coming into the first floor light, we've got one cable coming down to the two gang switch from the ground floor, and a three core going between these two, and obviously one going up to the first floor light here. I said that we don't have to add any more cables, so in other words, run another cable, but we might change the number of conductors in those cables so we can have it that both these lights are on exactly the same circuit with no more effort from the electrician during the wiring process, just a couple of extra conductors. And that's what we're gonna look at today. Just put this one to one side first. And first of all, let's bring our cable in as if it's come from the consumer to that ground floor light. Remembering from all the other videos we've done that it's this cable here. And in this case, we're gonna be using it as a brown line, blue neutral, and we're gonna oversee sleeve the bare conductor here with green and yellow sleeving to make it our CPC. So we're gonna bring that from the consumer unit to feed this lighting point here. We're very comfortable hopefully with these now where we've got the looping method. So the three in the middle, block of three for loop, a block of two, sorry, block of three this side, I apologize, is the neutral and a block of two this side is the line, in this case, switching line conductor is what we've got as our arrangement and we're used to using the three plate method as we will again today. So I'm gonna bring my conductors out of here. Let's start off with bringing our neutral out. So our neutral block is over here. So let's bring our neutral down. I'm gonna to have to make sure I leave myself some sort of room in order to get all the cables in. I'll try my best. You'll be using a rule. So that's my neutral brought in. Let's bring in my line conductor at the top of my possibly circuit breaker. Again, it doesn't matter which of the three connections in the loop I use. I'm gonna use the center one, it goes into my loop, and then our CPC as well. So we bring that in, and that's our first cable brought into the ground floor light fitting. We usually overstrike it with yellow, just to make sure it looks a little bit more like a CPC. So that first cable's brought in, that's our one millimeter squared at college, twin and earth or twin and CPC cable. We've brought in our neutral, our line, and our circuit protective conductor into the ground floor light. It could have been that this came from the kitchen, dining room, etc. but we've brought it in from the consumer unit. Now I want that fuse actually when pulled to turn off the ground floor light and the first floor light with no extra wiring effort for the electrician. So we're still gonna bring one cable down here. So if we look here, we brought down a cable down to here. Well, we brought down our twin and CPC cable. We had the permanent line brown, and it wasn't a neutral this time, and we've seen that in other videos. We oversleeved it with brown sleeving in order to make that blue conductor actually a switching line conductor. We're gonna do the same again, but this time I wanna bring down a three core cable. So I'm gonna bring down a three core cable because I also want to bring down a neutral. 
So we've used to using this three core cable between two way switches as we've got here. And we used to identify the gray and black with brown sleeve in because they are strappers. But we're not gonna use it for that. This time, we're gonna use this three core cable to bring down the permanent line, the switching line, and a neutral. So that means the brown will be our permanent line as it was on this drawing, but we've now got a choice of which one of these two we're gonna use as our switching line conductor. Now, you might think in the old wiring system pre-2004, the black conductor was always the neutral. So you might think, oh, we'll use the black one as neutral because that's what they used to do. You're actually trying to denutralize black because it's one of the line or phase colors, however you want to say it. So what we're going to do is not use that as our neutral. We're going to use that as our switching line. And we're actually going to take the gray, so I'll pull the sleeve in off here. We would oversleeve the gray one with blue to make it our neutral. So black's going to be switching line. Line conductor is brown as normal, and our neutral is going to be our gray conductor. That will make it easier for it to have it on one fuse when the fuse is pulled that both lights go off. And you'll see that develop in a minute. So if you're not sure at the moment, bear with me as we progress through this circuit wiring diagram. So it's a three core. Let's start with the, the brown one first. So the brown one's gonna come out of our loop connection. There's two spare ones left. So I'm gonna come out of this one here. It's gonna get a little bit crowded. I'm gonna try my best. So let's bring our brown out. And that's gonna be our permanent line. And as before, it's gonna go directly into our common connection, this time of a three core cable. We said our switching line was going to be black. So we're gonna bring out a black one next. So our black one's gonna be our switching line conductor. And that's gonna come out and let's bring it down. Doesn't matter which one of the two we go into, we're just gonna go into there. Because it's switching line, we must make sure we put our brown sleeve in on. So we just put a brown stripe with our pen at both ends. Now we've got the gray conductor, which is gonna bring in our neutral. Just get this one here. So we're gonna bring our neutral. So we're gonna bring that down as well. So let's bring that down to here. And now you're thinking, ah, well, where, where's that gonna go, Gaz? It's actually gonna just go in to a connection. So I don't need it at the minute for the switch. Okay, I need it to carry the neutral through to get to this lighting point here. So it doesn't matter where I leave it, I'm gonna put it in one of those Wago or Inshore style connectors. So let's bring that along. And I'm just gonna bring that into here and deposit it just there. So if I make a connection now, as if we've got one of those style of connectors. So we've got these, we've seen them before, haven't we? So we've got a Wago lever style connector. They also make a lever one in inshore, but I've just got the, the pushing ones. Two conductor connector, we could leave a three conductor connector in there, but we've gone with two, so we're gonna make two connections. That's the sort of thing we're gonna be leaving now in the back of the actual switch box. It might be something like this here, that you're leaving that in the back there in order that you can make your connections for your neutral. So I've left it in there. So I've brought my neutral down, but I haven't identified it as a neutral yet because I still need to put my blue sleeve in on. As we did here, we're gonna put our blue sleeve in on to identify it both ends as a neutral. So that's one cable coming down. It was one cable previously coming down, but it was a twin and CPC. We've made it a three core cable coming down and we're gonna take this neutral and feed it through so it can get to this first floor lighting point. We had a three core between here. So we had a three core between here, but that's using the method commonly used on the three plate method. Now we've also done a series of videos of wiring in PVC singles in conduit, which the two way method of connecting was slightly different. So if you think back to that, so let's look at the drawing that we did in that set of notes on the conduit looping system. It's probably this one here, the circuit diagram is probably easier to understand. We took line into common, so permanent line into common, two strappers across between our two way switches, and from the common of the last one, we went straight to the lamp. Now this can take a little bit of thinking, maybe a little bit of revisiting a previous video. We're gonna apply that within these switches. So line went to common, two conductors across, and from here up to the lamp. Let's see if we can apply that. So the line, permanent line connection needs to find its way into common. Well, this one here is permanently connected to the loop, so permanently connected to line. So if I bring a little cable, make a little cable into the back of my switch and loop it around to here, I will have a permanent line here. Let's do that. So I'm gonna take out 
the brown conductor that I've made up as a little loop link into there. So that's just as if we've cut off one of these conductors here. So the brown conductor cut it off and we've looped from the common of this switch to the common of here. So in other words, you put a cable between the two commons. Okay, so we'll link those together. So that means now there's a permanent line connection onto common and we're gonna bring a three core cable across. So let's think then the three core cable now, again, only really need two. So I need my two strappers to come across from here to here to here to here. So I need two strappers and I then need to bring my neutral across and my CPC. Okay, so how's that gonna work then? So I've gotta bring my neutral and my CPC across. So again, I'll use my gray one as a neutral. I'm gonna bring that across because that's gonna end up up here. And I bring these two across as my strappers and a CPC. That's what we're gonna do next. But first, for those keen eyed amongst you, Let's make sure we bring the CPC down from the three core cable that we wired earlier on from there. So let's just revisit that. I'm sure someone's already commented. So brown, black, gray, and the CPC of a three core brought in. Permanent line, switching line, neutral, and our CPC is brought down. We're now gonna bring a three core as we did before, but using a different method. Remember that method is the one that we saw when we were wiring in actually in uh, conduit, so we're gonna have our line into common, permanent line into common, two strappers across, we bring those strappers across, and then we take a switch one out. So we're gonna use brown, and we're gonna use black. So let's bring these across. Three core cable goes across, the brown one's in. And then we take our black one. Remember we need to put our brown sleeving on, both ends of the black. So that's those two in. So we've only got one conductor left uh, along with the CPC. Well, that makes two, Gary. So we've got two left. CPC to bring out and our gray neutral. So let's bring the CPC across. That's the easy one first. CPC goes across. And we're gonna bring across our neutral. So we're gonna use the gray again as our neutral in our three core. And again, we're gonna just put it into a connector when we get into here. So we're gonna put it into another one of these style connectors. So let's bring that into a connector. And again, because it's a neutral, we've gotta make sure that we put our blue sleeving on both ends. And that's brought the three core across, but differently. Let's go back to our original drawing. Remember, you can pause the video as you go if you need a few moments just to contemplate what's going on. We had a three core cable going across here. We've still got a three core, so in other words, one cable, that's what I'm interested in. But this time we've used the method that we would use in a conduit. We've got a permanent line, two strappers. We've brought a neutral through, which is a new thing for us. So we're feeding the neutral through to this switch. And then we have a cable coming down from here. Well, that cable is gonna be exactly the same as we did before. It's just gonna be our twin and CPC cable coming down, but this time the brown will go in common. Let's have a look at it. The brown will go in that common there, blue will go in neutral, and then we'll have our CPC connection as well. And that matches the circuit diagram that we've seen before. So let's bring the brown in. So the brown this time is a switching line, so it's gonna come out of this block of two and go into there, so that's a switching line. We're gonna need our neutral. Again, we're using twin and CPC, so we've got a blue neutral. Our neutral's gonna go into that block there. So let's bring our neutral up and into there. And our CPC, which I keep forgetting. So our CPC cable goes down like so. And overstrike it, just to make it look like a CPC. That's it. That, you know, well, well, guys, what's going on here? That's as simple as it was. We still had a feed into the ground floor light. This time we brought a three core down, so we could get a neutral down here. We still brought a three core between this one and this one, so in other words, so we could two way that upstairs or first floor lighting point. We still had that as a two way. How did we achieve that? We used this part here, used the conduit method really, effectively of how you would have your cable. So permanent line into common, two strappers across, switching line out of common, Circuit done. Let's go back to that circuit diagram just to confirm. Permanent line into common. Two strappers across. Switching line out of common. Do it again. Permanent line into common. Two strappers across. Switching line out of common. There we go. 
We've got the neutral that comes all the way from the consumer unit down into the three core, into a connection of some sort, follows through into the three core and finds its way up to here, to the first floor lighting point, which now has a neutral, a switching line and a CPC. We've got up here, obviously we've got the three plate method with a slight adjustment now that we've got this three core cable coming in. That means when I go to the consumer unit, I yank out the fuse or turn off the breaker, I will turn off the ground floor light as well as the first floor landing light, therefore only needing to turn off one of the devices in order to work safely within this two gang switch. What also is a massive advantage is if I wanted to change this to a three gang switch, I could quite simply change that to a three gang switch, say, and wire an outside light. When well, you're thinking, well, how's that gonna work? All I've got to do is bring a twin and CPC cable, like so, from this switch to my outside light. And then I could repeat the process, couldn't I? I could pick up my neutral connection. I could pick up my CPC. I could take the common here, permanent line, and feed it into another common of the third switch. So we feed the next one, so the three gang switch, and then my cable goes up to my light, taking my neutral and my switching line. And there you go, you've wired an outside light because you've already got a neutral connection and a permanent line connection at the switch itself. So a hybrid method, isn't it? It's similar to the two plate method that we've looked at extensively in loads of videos. It is the three plate method, but we've combined it with the, the knowledge that we've acquired maybe when looking at the conduit wiring system. So this is, well, it's one of them, isn't it? You're thinking to yourself, hello, gas, hello, gas, what's going on here? This is a build-up. This is one that you draw out, one that you think about, okay, in order that you can get your, your head around what's going on here. Not a lot has changed, has it? We've still got a cable coming down, but this time it's not a twin, it's a three-core. We've still got a three-core going across and a twin and CPC going up. But the thinking behind it's changed slightly with how we're wiring between these switches which keeps linking back to other videos that I've produced. Hopefully we've not gone too far. Maybe next time, I don't know yet, maybe next time we just look at how we could put this outside light. There won't be a lot of room to add it into the drawing. Maybe I could just bolt on a switch here and just show you how that would work for a three gang switch. I don't think that would hurt as a little short video as I explained it there at the end. Hopefully this video has been some help and it's uh, moving our learning on but remember, this is a massive series of videos on circuit um, diagrams and wiring diagrams in lighting circuits using the two plate, the three plate, and the conduit looping method. And of course, the more layers we add, the more complicated this can feel. But again, if you're in industry installing this using this method, you'll go, simple Gary, I knew exactly what I was doing there. Okay, I hope this video has been some help.